In the rugged landscapes of the Old West, where lawlessness often reigned supreme, John King Fisher carved a fearsome reputation as one of the deadliest gunfighters of his time. His life, marked by violence and gunfights, stands as a testament to the harsh realities of the frontier. In this video, we will explore the riveting tale of John King Fisher, a figure whose name became synonymous with deadly gunfights in the annals of the Old West. John King Fisher was a Texas rancher, lawman, gunfighter, and outlaw. Fisher was born during October of 1853 in Collin County, north of Dallas, Texas, to Job Fisher and the former Lucinda Warren. His brothers were Jasper and James Fisher. Fisher's mother died when he was two years old, and his father married a woman named Minerva. After the Civil War ended, the family moved to Williamson County, near Austin, where his brother James was then residing. Job Fisher, a cattleman overseeing two freight wagons, shifted his life to Goliad, situated west of Victoria, Texas, after the passing of his stepmother Minerva. Joining them was his paternal grandmother, a steadfast support in raising Fisher's children. King Fisher was a charismatic and handsome man popular with many women. In 1869, Fisher's father sent him to reside with his brother James. However, trouble found Fisher as he faced arrest on horse theft charges shortly thereafter. Sentenced to two years in prison because of his youth, he was released after only a short time that same year. After his release from prison, Fisher returned to life as a cowboy, mastering the art of horse breaking. The relentless bandit raids and violations suffered by Texan ranch and farm families spurred Fisher into posse involvements, gradually cementing his reputation. Fisher began to dress rather flamboyantly and carried ivory-handled pistols. He became quite proficient with a gun and began running with a band of outlaws which carried out frequent raids into Mexico. However, after only a short time, a dispute arose over how the spoils of their loot would be divided. One of the men drew his pistol and Fisher immediately pulled his guns and managed to kill three of the bandits in the ensuing shootout. Over subsequent months, his tenacity claimed the lives of seven additional Mexican bandits. By 1872, Fisher acquired a ranch along the Rio Grande near Eagle Pass, strategically positioned at the border in Maverick County. He used this ranch as his gang's base of operations and even was so brazen as to place a sign that read, This is King Fisher's Road, take the other one. During this time, King Fisher rarely committed acts of violence or theft against other Texas settlers, instead opting to raid and rustle cattle across the Mexican border. This was a time of massive raids, pillaging, looting, raping, and murder by United States and Mexican bandits. In response to feelings of alleged lack of reprisal or defense by authorities, the Texans formed more groups of bandits. This activity only fueled disputes and ill will from the Mexican side and generated substantial problems for Texas Ranger battalions, who were trying to quell Mexican bandit raids into Texas. The Texas Rangers, under Leander H. McNelly, opposed the Mexican rebel leader Juan Cortina. The Rangers also raided the Fisher Ranch and arrested Fisher. However, he was released after a gentleman's agreement was reached that his cattle rustling into Mexico would end. Pressure from the Texas Rangers caused Fisher to retire from this trade, and he began legitimate ranching. By the late 1870s, Fisher had a reputation as being fast with a gun. In 1878, a heated dispute erupted between Fisher and four Mexican vaqueros. Fisher is alleged to have clubbed the nearest one to him with a branding iron, while another drew a pistol. In response, Fisher swiftly drew his own pistol, fatally shooting the armed man. Wheeling around, he discharged shots at the remaining two, who were unarmed and perched on a fence during the confrontation. 
Local lawmen found themselves apprehending Fisher multiple times for public altercations, and he faced an intent-to-kill charge at least once. Remarkably, charges dissolved due to a lack of witnesses. Although well-known as a troublemaker, Fisher was well-liked in South Texas. He married the former Sarah Vivian on April 6, 1876, and the couple had four daughters. With his new family, he began a more settled life by working in the cattle business. Between 1881 and 1883, he served as a deputy sheriff and later acting sheriff of Uvalde County, Texas. During his service, he trailed two stagecoach robbery suspects, the brothers Tom and Jim Hanahan, to their ranch in near Leakey in Real County, Texas. The pursuit led to a fatal encounter with Tom, who resisted arrest and fell to Fisher's gunfire. Jim then surrendered and was taken into custody along with the stolen loot from the robbery. In 1884, during a business trip to San Antonio, Texas, John King Fisher reunited with his longtime associate, the gunfighter and gambler Ben Thompson. Thompson was unpopular in San Antonio since he had earlier killed a popular theater owner there named Jack Harris. A lingering feud had simmered between Thompson and Harris's allies. On March 11th, Fisher and Thompson attended a play at the Turner Hall Opera House before heading to the Vaudeville Variety Theater around 10.30 p.m. Accompanying them was Jacob Coy, a local lawman. Thompson wanted to see Joe Foster, a theater owner and friend of Harris's, and one of those fueling the ongoing feud. Billy Sims, another theater owner and Foster's new partner, had already spoken to Thompson. Fisher and Thompson were directed upstairs to meet with Foster. Coy and Sims soon joined them in the theater box. Foster declined to engage with Thompson, prompting Fisher to sense an impending altercation. Sims and Coy stepped aside, and as they did, Fisher and Thompson leapt to their feet just as a volley of gunfire erupted from another theater box, a hail of bullets, hitting both Thompson and Fisher. A sudden barrage of gunfire erupted from an adjacent theater box, showering both Thompson and Fisher with bullets. Thompson collapsed onto his side, and either Coy or Foster rushed to him, delivering a fatal shot to his head. Thompson was unable to return fire and died almost immediately. Fisher sustained 13 gunshot wounds, managing to fire a single shot in response, potentially injuring Coy, though this detail remains unverified. It's plausible that one of the assailants may have wounded Coy, leaving him permanently disabled. Foster, in attempting to draw his pistol at the first of the fight, shot himself in the leg, which was later amputated ultimately leading to Foster's passing shortly thereafter. The description of the events of that night is contradictory. There was a public outcry for a grand jury indictment of those involved. However, no action was taken. The San Antonio police and the prosecutors showed little interest in the case. Fisher was initially buried at his ranch, but his remains were later moved to the Pioneer Cemetery in Uvalde. For years after Fisher's death, Tom Hanahan's mother would travel to Fisher's grave on the anniversary of Tom Hanahan's death. She would build a fire on top of the grave and then dance around it. According to one reporter, when asked about how many notches Fisher had on his gun, or how many people he had killed, Fisher's response was forthright, 37, not including Mexicans. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.